offshore platforms like Lunskoya A, or Loon A for short, are more often reached by air rather than by sea. Incidentally, you will simply not be admitted on board a helicopter unless you first complete specialized helicopter underwater escape training. After all, takeoff and landing are considered quite dangerous. The platform itself is a full-fledged mini-city. Even after a week, you still lose your way around these tangled corridors. Stairs. Levels. And rooms. However, this colossus may be generally divided into two large areas. Production and accommodation. The first area has everything for hydrocarbon production and platform operation. The second offers everything for comfortable living. Cabins, leisure, meals, fast internet. It seems that you are in a hotel on the mainland rather than on a reinforced concrete tech island in the open sea. On a sunny day, it seems like a stone's throw from the shore, but this feeling is misleading. In fact, it's 14 kilometers to the Sakhalin shore, and the distance from the highest platform point to the seabed is 152 meters, higher than the Great Pyramid, higher than Europe's tallest Ferris wheel, and just a bit shorter than the famous Shukhov Tower in Moscow. Particular interest is stirred by the platform supports, or in scientific terms, gravity-based structures. These are gigantic structures resting on the seabed, designed to withstand both the weight of the platform and the pressure of pack ice in winter, and even potential seismic loads. Moreover, each support is also a structure with internal spaces and communications. For example, the first support has seawater pumps, they desalinate water for further use on the platform. The third support has the main export pipelines for transporting gas to Sakhalin. The fourth one has embedded sewage system caissons. And the second support has wells for hydrocarbon production. In total, there are one, two, three, in some, 24 wells, each with a depth between 2,000 and 3,000 meters. The Lunskaya field, just like all the others, by the way, is not a single large cavity like a cave, but an area of scattered, finely porous rocks like sandstone. Thus, wells are drilled down and in different directions to maximize the gas extraction area and the distances are enormous. Some wells extend their reach as far as nine kilometers away from the Lunskoya A platform. But how are multiple holes made in the ground if the platform itself is stationary? The answer is obvious. The drilling rig is mobile. This means it can move left, right, forwards, and back. If we take a look at this whole thing from above, we can see that it moves inside a rectangle. And if we put this rectangle in a circle, we will get a cross-section of one of the gravity supports of the platform. Drilling is ultimately a high-tech process. It is fully or almost fully automated.
Mechanisms are operated from a protected operator's cabin. But the production of hydrocarbons is not just about drilling. Gas conditioning for future transportation to the mainland is no small task either. We are so used to pure gas at home that we have no idea what it looks like underground. Down there, it's a heck of a mix of methane, sand, produced water, and various impurities like condensate. Directing such natural gas to the main export pipelines is strictly forbidden. Pipelines can be damaged quickly if nothing is done, for example, with produced water in gas. Here is why. Gas flow in the pipelines is accompanied by the temperature fluctuating up and down. The pressure also fluctuates up and down. As a result, water vapor condenses into almost snowflakes that stick to the inner pipe walls in turn. Well, not into snowdrifts, though it looks similar, but into gas hydrate plugs, which clog the pipe tightly. One such clog means a full stop for gas production and transportation. Now then, in order to prevent this, natural gas is conditioned here on the platform. For example, by adding monoethylene glycol. A substance well known to drivers, monoethylene glycol or ethylene glycol is an antifreeze agent. It is part of windscreen washer fluids and brake fluids so that the fluids don't freeze in the cold. It's the same here. Ethylene glycol prevents water, which remains in natural gas, from freezing. Scientifically, it prevents gas hydrates in the pipeline. Monoethylene glycol is added here, and after that, we can say that's it. The natural gas is ready to leave the platform. It leaves through one of the platform's supports. Through two pipes on the bottom of the Sea of Okhotsk, having reached Sakhalin, the gas is subject to multi-step drying and separation processes. All of them take place at the Onshore Processing Facility, abbreviated as OPF. <laughs>